Hello everyone, we the students of Retail Flower Senior Secondary School are here to present a webinar on wetlands. Myself, Lakshita, and here I'm with my friends Anvi, Anushka, and Parul. So, do you know what are wetlands? If you don't, then you might get to understand it here with my, me and my friends. So now, with a brief intro, let's start our presentation. What is wetland? A wetland is a place in which the land is covered by water, salt, fresh, or, or somewhere in between, either seasonally or permanently. It functions as its own distinct ecosystem. You can recognize wetlands from other types of land or bodies of water, primarily by the vegetation that has adapted to wet soil. We are chiefly here because we celebrate World Wetland Day on 2nd February to raise global awareness about the vital role of wetlands for people and planet. Now, I hope that you might have gotten a brief about wetland and more of ready to understand the species living, its necessities, their restoration, following with an encouraging story. So let's continue by reading a conception shared by De Swing Yang on wetland. Now, I would like my friend Parul to tell you more about wetlands. Hello everyone, myself Parul, as my friend Lakshita already told you about the wetland. Now it's my turn to tell you about the species lives in different wetlands. A wide variety of species live in wetlands. Bird, including ducks, geese, kingfisher, and sand peepers use wetlands at pit stops during long migrations, providing them with protection and food. Mammals like otters, beavers, and even tigers rely on wetlands to find food and shelter. And of course, wetlands are home to many types of fishes. Now, let's see what are the different types of wetlands. Wetlands, are, wetlands take many forms including rivers, marshes, bogs, mangroves, mudflats, ponds, swamps, billabongs, lagoons, lakes, and floodplains. Most large wetlands area often include a combination of different type of freshwater system. Wetlands in world. Wetlands occur naturally throughout the world, except in Antarctica, and are considered the most biological diverse of all ecosystems. There are some most beautiful photos of wetlands in world. The Okavango Delta, Pantanal, Danube Delta, the Sundarbans, Kakadu Wetlands. Kerala backwaters, Isi Mangal is a wetland park, Kamargyo. Now, with the main focus on the Delhi NCR, there are some names of wetlands. Najafgad wetland, Vasai wetland, Valsava lake, Surajpur wetland. Now, why wetlands are important? Wetlands play a critical role in maintaining many natural cycles and supporting a wide range of biodiversity. They purify and repulsing our water and provide the fish and rice that feed billions. They serve as a natural sponge against flooding and drought, protect our coastlines and help fight climate change. Now, let's see world with wetlands and world without wetlands. Now, I want to hand it over to my friend, Anvi. Thank you, Paul, for sharing such a valuable information. But the question that still remains is why are they trying? The world's remaining wetlands are under threat due to pollution, water drainage, unsustainable use, and large dams that alter the water regimes. Either drying out the wetlands or allowing saline sea water to infiltrate inland. So, what can we do to restore them? There are basically four steps to carry out the restoration process. First is the treatment of invasive species. Second is placement of clean sand and sediment. Third is seeding and planting. And last, maintenance and monitoring. When we are studying about these steps, the important thing to note is that these steps can be easily done by the common people to give an aid in restoration. So now let me tell you about the treatment of invasive species. Even before the start of shaft and burrow work, the basic step is to remove the species which disturb the ecosystem. 
This is oftenly done by the herbicide treatment, which is most common and should be performed in a manner that has the least environmental impact to native species. Second, is placement of clean sand and sediment. After the excavation and removal of impacted sediment, the rebuilding takes place. By the installation of placement of clean material, which can be facilitated in several ways, and each project is evaluated to determine the method is economical and least damaging to the undisturbed area. And the next step is seeding and planting. After the new material has been placed and graded, it is imperative to seed the area and plant it the trees quickly. This will ensure a quicker recovery and it will help prevent erosion. And just as importantly, the next step is maintenance and monitoring. When the restoration is complete, the wetland is to be monitored which is required to replace the plants that don't grow on invasive species that move in while the native plants. And maintaining the wetland area is a continuous process throughout the growing period until the vegetation takes hold. But it doesn't conclude the restoration of wetland, so I would like to call Anushka to continue describing the artificial method which is commonly used for restoration. Thank you for giving us the solution for this animation. My name is Anushka and here is the most subtle method, which is artificial wetland, also known as constructed wetland. It is an organic wastewater treatment system that may mix and improves the effectiveness of the processes that help to purify water, similar to naturally occurring wetlands. It can be used for either secondary or tertiary wastewater treatment. Now we will talk about an engineer who found his occurring in conserving wetlands. Ramveer Tanwar, an engineer who gave up a job to work on reviving wetlands in his home region. Reviving wetlands, especially urban wetlands, is an important step towards water security. Drying up of water bodies can worsen the water crisis, and with vanishing wetlands, the allied biodiversity could disappear too. According to Tanwar, lakes and ponds are a place of beauty and people take pictures of them, but sadly the reality is different. Wetlands are now either converted into construction sites or dumping grounds. With similar thoughts, sharing one of the experiences they have encountered while they were working in Gongola village in Gautam Buddhanagar. Rohit Adan, part of Tanwar's team, stated that people were angry and doubtful about why they were so interested in their dirty water reservoir. This shows how the mindset of the people is a key factor in preserving the ecosystem. Converse work has put a spotlight on various wetlands, especially Surajpur wetlands, in rapid urbanization of Gautam Buddhanagar. His constant activism and persuasive power is bringing local forest officials to look at the wetland, revive it, and save it from possible construction encroachments. Ranveer Tanwar, a former engineer, has revived around 20 ponds and lakes in Noida and Greater Noida region. Everyone thanked Ramveer Tanwar for successfully reviving wetland in 2019. There were many schemes implemented by the world, but Ramasa Convention is a global treaty which has been signed by different countries and NGOs for the protection of wetlands and their resources. It came into force in 1975, and do you know, there are about 42 Ramasa sites in India listed under Ramasa Convention. And today, around 170 countries are a part of this treaty as of NPCA, which has been implemented by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change for conservation and management of identified wetlands, including lakes in the country. So thank you all for listening to us so patiently. Let us restore wetlands together to make the earth a place to be beautiful. Hope you have a nice day.